Right, in this video we're going to talk about uh, rise and fall time measurements. These are typically measurements that are made on digital signals. Uh, they could be you know, logic signals they, you know, out of a microcontroller or some digital logic circuit. They could be the output of a comparator or something like that. Uh, and often we want to know about how fast the signal can transition from a logic 0 to a logic 1 or vice versa so that we can know how fast of a clock rate we can run or how much high frequency energy there is here so we know whether we need to design our printed circuit board traces to be transmission lines or maybe we have to have terminations or we've got to be careful about things like reflections and that kind of thing okay so it's you know it's very instructive to look at uh, how fast what you know what the rising and falling edges are what the speed is and you also have to kind of consider some of the practical applications too is that you know, many times waveforms will have noise or ringing on them maybe the waveform's got a little bit of slow tailing to it maybe it's got a little droop to it so you've got to take those things into account um, and when we talk about measuring rise and fall time it's most most common we're talking about measuring the transition time that it takes to go from say you know the 10 percent point of a waveform okay meaning that zero percent is the low the low or the logic zero level how long it takes to get from rising 10 percent of the way up to 90 percent of the way up with 100 percent being the final resting point okay and then fall time will obviously be the 90 to 10. there are some uh, logic families that use a 20 to 80 rise and fall instead of 10 to 90 but 10 to 90 by far is the most common and you've got to be careful about what you call 0% and 100% to be sure that it makes sense for the circuit that you're dealing with. Now most modern digital scopes in the last decade or more, uh, in the last 10 or 15 years even, have included a rise and fall time measurement as a basic part of the measurement capability. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's almost cheating, <laughs> okay, but it certainly works. I mean, even this scope here is about 8 or 9 years old in terms of its design. If I take this same signal and I couple it into channel 1 here, I'm going through a, a 50 ohm terminator here because uh, this scope doesn't have the ability of terminating its input to 50 ohms. So there's a waveform there, digital waveform. We can see it's got some really fast edges with respect to uh, the pulse width. But if we want to make a rise and fall time measurement here, one of the considerations is you have to ensure that you get enough samples on that edge to get a, re a decent reading. And most of the scopes will give you some feedback about that. Some of them won't. Some of them will. Some of them won't. So if I go to uh, measure, and uh, what we'll do is go to channel 1, turn that on, and let me see if I can focus in on that. You can see the measurement type here says none. Okay. Let's uh, push this until it says frequency, period, mean, peak to peak, cycle RMS, min, max, rise time. So there's our rise time measurement. Look at the measurement. It looks like it's got a, uh, a question mark next to it. And that's how this scope is letting you know that the edge is really fast with respect to the sample rate the waveform is using right now. So you really can't believe that measurement. Okay. So uh, it's always helpful. The nice thing about the digital scopes is that my trigger point is right here in the middle. So I can speed, you know, the sweep speed or the horizontal scale up and uh, and still have that, that rising edge right there in the middle. Okay. Let's say I kind of feel I'll move my trigger point down in the middle there, and I'm going to I'm just speeding up the time scale now here. Now you can see I'm kind of stretching that edge out, and now I can actually see that measurement. Okay, so now here at 10 nanoseconds of division, okay, now I don't have that question mark here at the value anymore, and we see it's bouncing around between you know the high 13s, low 14 nanosecond type numbers. Okay, so you know pretty easy to get that measurement right on the scope here. You know, we didn't have to do anything special, it's just built in. Um, so, uh, but again, the only have, thing you've got to be careful of is to ensure that uh, you've got enough samples along that edge. By increasing the sample rate of the scope, by adjusting memory or adjusting the time scale, such that you get a uh, sufficient you know, number of points here to get an accurate measurement. Now, back before digital scopes, we had another method of making these measurements. And uh, what we did is we took advantage of some uh, markings on the radical that you may have seen it never really paid much attention to on an old analog scope. So let's go take a look at that. So here we're looking at a 2400 series uh, scope from Tech. This happens to be a 2467, uh, but uh, most of the scopes like this work the same way. Okay, so I'm going to take that same signal, couple it in here to channel 2. All right. And if we take a look at the scope, uh, I'm going to bring the scale down here. So there's my same signal that I'm looking at here. 
Okay, but now what we're going to do is take advantage of some of the radical markings on here. If we take a look at the radicals, you typically you've got your, you know, 10 by 10 or 10 by 8, depending on the scope, you know, grid. But you'll also notice this other set of dot, you know, markings here. There's a 0, 10, 90, and 100. Well, that, those were typically used for making rise and fall time measurements. You'll notice that the 0%, the 0 value and the 100% are you know, basically kind of not on the grid, they're kind of you know, off the grid here a little bit. And those would be the things that we'd want to do to, use, to set essentially our 0 and 100% points on our, our pulse. And how we do that is we take advantage of the variable control okay, on the uh, vertical scale. So if I adjust my vertical scale such that that signal goes past those uh, 0 and 100% points, then I can go and turn my vernier control okay, and adjust it. And you can see as I adjust that, I'm adjusting essentially the vertical scale. You'll also notice it's, it's, not, it's telling me I'm not exactly at 500 millivolts of division anymore because I'm, I'm making it variable. Okay. We don't really care what the absolute value is for these particular measurements. So what we want to do is adjust it okay, and then the vertical position, if I adjust that at the same time here, such that our 0% you know, voltage of the waveform Okay, see if that will focus in there a little bit. Let's see. And the 100% value, okay, are lying on the dotted lines for the 0 and 100%. Okay, now that I've got that, now what I can do is go speed the uh, time scale up. Okay, and we keep speeding that up here. Okay, and uh, eventually we're going to start seeing and stretching out that rising edge that I'm triggering on. Okay, now that I've got that stretched out here, okay. I can actually go and move the horizontal position here, move that waveform back and forth. And what I can do is position, say, that where that waveform crosses the 10% line, maybe position that right on a radical crossing right there. Okay. And then count over how many divisions until we cross the 90% point right here. And it looks like that's about one point, between 1.3 and 1.4. It's just about 1.4 divisions. And we're at 10 nanoseconds of division times 1.4. That's about that 14 nanoseconds, the same number we were measuring on the digital scope. Now this scope here also has uh, a set of cursors I could turn on. And by turning those cursors on, I can actually position those you now at that crossing point, like this guy here, right where we're crossing the 0% point, maybe right there. And this one will position right over here where we're crossing the 90% point. Okay, and I can make the measurement here, that shows about 13.58 nanoseconds. Okay, so that's how we made a rise or fall time measurement. If I wanted to look at a fall time measurement, all I do is change the slope of the trigger, instead of triggering on the positive edge, I'll change that trigger on the falling edge, and there's our falling edge, and we can make the same measurement on the falling edge. Okay, but it was largely a very manual measurement that we made, you know, in the days before we had the digital scopes. Um, now, what's interesting to note is that... Uh, we're making a measurement on the same edge that we're triggering on, okay? And the way we can do that is the scopes have got a, a delay line built in so that the signal that's coming in here that's you know, being measured and then being used to trigger on is also going through a delay line before it goes to be displayed on the screen. So we're actually seeing a little bit, bit of, literally a bit of pre-trigger information here, okay? But part of the problem with some of the scopes, especially you know scopes that didn't have this really special CRT that's in this scope here, that the, the, the trace would tend to get very dim uh, when, uh, uh, when you sped the thing up very quick and you're looking at that leading edge before the delay line. So the way we typically got around that was uh, oftentimes using the dual delayed time base. And to kind of demonstrate that one, we'll move over to one more scope here. So let's go back over to this old 485. This one doesn't have the cursors built in. This does have a way of terminating to 50 ohms, so I've got the, uh, I'm going into a 50 ohm input here. There's that same pulse, okay? And what we can do is, you know, I could do the same thing. I could speed this guy way up here, okay? And if I do that, we can see the trace starts to disappear. I can turn the intensity way up to start to see it again, okay? Not all scopes will have enough range in the intensity to let you do this at these very fast speeds, like, you know, in this case, five nanoseconds of division. So the way we got around that, okay, again is, uh, is to use the delayed time base okay and what I can do is let's kind of just get enough a rising and falling edge on the screen here I'm going to turn that intensity down a little bit okay and uh, let's go adjust my vertical uh, control such that I've got this signal sitting 
you know, kind of right on those dotted lines. And we're just about there. This controls a little dirty on the scope. And let's see, that looks like right about there. Okay, so now I've got the vertical set to you know the 100% point and the 0% point pretty close here. All right, and now what we'll do is we'll uh, turn the uh, intensified delayed sweep on. I turn that on and speed up the delay or speed up uh, time base B. You may notice, let me turn the brightness up on that. I'm moving this little dot, you can kind of see uh, that dot moving across here. If I move it onto the falling edge here, I see that falling edge light up. All right, now I know I'm delayed right onto that. And if I go to uh, hit the alternate delayed sweep, now I can see that falling edge. As I adjust the delay back and forth, we can see there's that falling edge that I'm looking at. Okay, so now I can use that to make that measurement. Okay, and I can adjust the delay even further. You see I'm moving across the bottom of that, that edge, and then I'll get the rising edge on here. There's the rising edge. I can make the measurement on that. Now you also notice that there's a little bit of jitter and noise on that. Okay, because we're asking the this, this scope to do uh, quite a bit of delay here. I'm, the main time base is running at 5 microseconds of division. I'm running this guy down here at 10 nanoseconds of division. So that's uh, you know, almost, that's like 500 times faster. So uh, I'm going to get a little bit of jitter. Now the way we get around that, okay, let's kind of go back here to this falling edge, is I'm going to tell the scope that rather than just to run this, this delayed time base, after the delay, I'm going to tell it to be triggered after the delay, and I'm just going to pop this switch down here. And that, what that does is that says I want the B time base to be triggerable, okay, after the delay that I've set. And you can look at the difference. If I look at the, the scope here, I'm going to kind of move my, uh, and let's, let's go flip that switch, okay, and now I've got a nice stable uh, display there. And uh, so now I'm triggering on that first rising edge that's appearing after this delay setting, and I can adjust my time scale. So now I can get a nice stable display here, okay? And uh, I can adjust my trigger position a little bit. And if I switch just to the B sweep and not have the A sweep on at all, now I've got a nice clean signal that I can go adjust my position on and make that measurement. Okay, in this case I'm at 5 nanoseconds of division, so I'm at 5, 10, Oh, again, about 14 nanoseconds uh, for that rise time. If I want to make the fall time measurement, all I need to do is swap the trigger slope on the B time base, and there's my fall time. And again, I can move the position of this and make that same measurement on the fall time. So this is how we did those measurements before we had the luxury of the analog scopes to make them automatically for us. It was a, a largely a manual process, but uh, I think it was pretty interesting in the things that we had to do in order to make those measurements and to do them accurately and to get a nice clean looking display that would be tough to do uh, with at these very fast sweep speeds sometimes. So anyway, I hope you felt that interesting and uh, it's uh, kind of fun playing with some of this old analog stuff just to, uh, to know how, uh, how things were done before uh, we had the, the luxury of these digital scopes.